Yes, I skipped ISIS because A, I had to go cover a hockey game for uh, photojournalism, and B, do I really have to use the F word? It was filler. Okay, I really am not liking a lot of uh, Smallville's next coming episodes. Well, by, by saying not like, I mean, like, not like, not hate. Because looking at um, what just happened with Isis, what's happening with Harvest coming up, I'm not going to spoil it for you, and Abandon, or Ambush, sorry, um, after that, there is really not a lot that Smallville is doing with its creativity. We've got Darkseid on the show right now, and we're barely using him. And all kinds of other, uh, like, yeah, we're getting a lot of guest stars, but still, like, the episode coming up, I'm, like I said, not going to spoil any details for you. I'm definitely going to go watch it, because I think that it's a hilarious concept of what i pretty sure is going on, judging by the preview. Um, but, yeah, like... <laughs> It's just a lot of filler right now, and I really don't think that a lot of it is going to clear up until Abandoned, which I am definitely looking forward to because of a certain old Superman cast member returning, um, or a Superman mythology cast member, if you want to call him or her that. Emphasis on her. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get straight into ISIS. This is going to be a little bit like uh, my review of S.H.I.E.L.D., because... There was only a little bit that I was able to put into, um, like, the review, because I didn't see the whole thing. I saw bits and clips. All right, so what we can obviously gather from here, from the synopsis, is that Lois gets possessed by the Egyptian goddess Isis. Now, of course, we saw in S.H.I.E.L.D. that she was visiting Carter Hall in Egypt, and she saw the necklace that Isis wore, and she... Uh, like, I, I, like I said, I didn't see it. So does somebody want to explain to me how that thing got into her purse? Did Carter put it there? Is the thing like the one ring of power? It just hops around a frickin' rock until it gets into her purse? I don't know. Um, and of course, when she puts it on, she gets possessed. And people have been saying this. And yeah, it's a good argument. And I'm sick and tired of it too. How many times are we going to see Lois or everybody possessed on Smallville? Like, they've done every trick in the frickin' book. They've done ghosts. They've done aliens. They've done witches. It's not that clever anymore. Um, so I guess, like, the main thing that the Smallville episode wanted to get across is how far somebody's willing to go to for love. Because Isis is all about trying to resurrect her dead husband, Osiris. And Clark is in the middle of wondering whether he should uh, tell Lois his own secret now that he's seen the future with Homecoming. So, Clark, um, Kat Grant has returned to the Daily Planet. And she's kind of moving in on Clark now that um, she sees Lois is back in the picture. And these two really, really, and I mean really don't get along. Um, because they are polar opposites when it comes to character and personality. And, uh, yeah, like, I can just imagine, because I am definitely rooting for, um, Lois and Clark here. I am not a Clois fan, like all the fangirls, um, but I can definitely see from their perspective why a lot of them would probably just want to friggin' reach through the TV and just punch Cat, because all she's really doing is like, so now that I'm back, and you can pick up where that's gonna go, um... Yeah, so there's a lot of Egyptian mythology here, which I'm um, a decent fan of. I don't have a thorough knowledge of it, but it's always cool to hear about it. Um, big fan of stuff like the Mummy and um, Scorpion King, and a uh, bunch of other like some of the old uh, Mummy movies back in like the old horror movies. Um, so we get here, um, like she's basically by resurrecting Osiris, she's going to unleash hell on earth don't ask me how it just somehow makes sense um and in the midst of this because cat finds out that lois has powers she because of isis she thinks that lois is the blur uh-huh because she's the only person in smallville to have powers or metropolis for that matter yeah 
You know, I know that she's been a journalist for a grand total of probably a month, but seriously, lady, this is not a new phenomenon. People get powers in Metropolis. Even Lois is saying at the end, this is Metropolis. Anything can happen. Of course anything can happen. Apparently this lady's been living under a freaking rock for like the past 20 years. For 10 years. Anyway. Um, so she takes pictures and um, she's telling Tess that she knows about this. And of course because Tess knows all about Clark, she's laughing. And um, yeah, it's a, we've never really heard Tess laugh before. And I know it's not something like, ooh, she laughed, but... Yeah, it was hilarious, because it's not really in her character, but obviously she knows it's a load of crap, so she finds it hilarious, as much as we all do. And uh, Tess is actually working with the Justice League to bring Isis down, and um, she's resurrecting some of uh, Lex's old files to look into some stuff. Of course, Oliver is not very pleased with, with the fact that uh, Tess is there, and... Um, by the end, though, he's able to accept it, and he actually, he, um, allows her, and Clark, too, of course, they allow her to become part of the Justice League. So, yeah, there's, um, definitely a sense of Tess figuring out who she really is by the end of this season. Um, I think that's definitely the whole, you know, aligning with Zod thing and realizing how badly that went because she died. <laughs> Um, has definitely put her into a new perspective of what to do with her life. Um, and we also get a little bit of, inner, of uh, her and Alexander. I only saw a bit. Obviously, Alexander is aging a bit faster than normal. He's getting taller and growing, uh, growing faster. And he's sort of looking to test like a mother figure. Now, this is where I'm wondering if Smallville is just going to kind of pull the same thing that they usually do with their Smallville villains, like they did it with Lex already, and I'm wondering if they're going to take a new approach or they're just going to sort of do the same thing. I really hope that they don't do the same thing, because Smallville really, you've seen it with Doomsday, you've seen it with Lex, you've seen it with Lionel Luther, you've seen it with General Major Zod. They have the people who are going to be the seasonal villain slowly evolving further and further. Like, just keep on going up the scale. Um, of how evil they are. And I really don't want to have to see the whole thing go over with Alexander again just because he's growing up. There was hints on the synopsis or the summary of this episode that he has some mental instability. Well, that's kind of granted because Lex was already friggin' crazy. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I don't want to have to see, like... We spent, like, seven years with Lex figuring out how evil he is. Now the guy is obvious. This is not the same Lex, but it's the Lex Luthor we all know. And as much as I don't like that, I don't want to have to see all those seven years be wasted. I don't think any of us want to see that. So what I would like to... what I My theory is, and it's just a theory, I have no idea what the Smallville writers are thinking, is that Lex is still in there because the other clone had all of his memories the Lex we all know is still in there but he's playing this all as an act now you're probably thinking well the kid's like five or six years old or seven or something he can't be doing that Lex is frigging brilliant and if he has all of his memories and granted he is a, still a young kid so we don't know how much of, of the Lex we know is really in there but I just want to, I, I think that it's going to be a big revelation uh, coming up when um, we see Lex uh, start to crack. Um, but yeah, I, I want to see, I don't want to see the same thing. Like, I don't want to see what we saw in seven years happen in one year. Because that's just going to be a total letdown and you're really just recycling an old idea. Um, and eventually, Cat uh, Grant goes to um, attack Lois. Because uh, at the Daily Planet, because she figures she's the blur. So she actually grabs a pen and stabs her hand. Showing the cat is pretty bold, which I wanted to see more of. But at the same time, she doesn't say, Hey, everybody, I'm going to prove Lois is the blur. <coughs> you know, um, she doesn't do that. And then uh, Clark, of course, destroys the evidence. 
And then we get um, a scene at the end, the last scene, where he confesses to Lois. Dun, da, da, da. He's the blur. And, of course, she tells him she already knew. And she freaking tackles him and starts making out with him in the Daily Planet basement. And, yeah, that was pretty unexpected. But it was still a great way to cap off the episode. And I can't wait to see the episode coming up next.